Wonderful, and for most of you, we are back. For some of you that operate like me and are likely tardy a lot of the time, you're experiencing this for the first time, and much like a challenging vintage, wireless internet broadcasting uh, has its challenges, but in those challenging vintages, that's when the cream rises to the top and the fine folks at Seller Pass and Taste Live, nothing can throw these people off. They are consummate professionals of the highest order. I'm the mutineer, Alan Croft, and uh, we are here broadcasting from the Napa Valley Film Festival in Yountville at the V Marketplace. Yet again, we are joined by yeah. Rob Lloyd from Jessup Sellers. Welcome back. Cheers. It's like time travel. I better. know, it's good to be back. Take your first sip for the same time. All right. Well, I've already had a couple, just practicing now. It's but this is the proverbial first sip again, and you were so excited the first time. I want to see if we can recapture the magic. Actually, it's getting better. It's Once getting it's better. opening see? up, I like this. So it was all for some grand yeah. reason. So yeah. um, a couple of people were joining us before and we had some questions come through. Uh, we're drinking the 2009 Jessup yep. red wine here, the Jewel. Yep, very young. And everybody seems to be very intrigued about this blend. Yeah. So time to geek out. Well, this is just, uh, you know, this is kind of fun stuff when you're making wine is taking a bunch of different components and seeing how you can blend it. So mm -hmm. it's, you know, I would look at it as cooking, you know, sometimes tossing just one little herb. That's kind of where the uh, Petit Verdot 1% is. But uh, we tried to make Merlot based, and I, I definitely am a Merlot fan. I like a little bit more of the cool climate Merlot. So this Merlot comes from uh, Coombsville or Carneros from some different vineyards that we have. And then the Cab Franc was from Coombsville. Uh, again, unusually cool, and that kind of brings out a little bit more of kind of a, an olive or a green note, which I really like in this wine. Um, you know, again, we did just bottle it in August. Uh, it doesn't come out for a bit, but um, you know, when I like to drink stuff. I like drinking what I like and we're drinking what I like. So so when you're putting together a blend like this, obviously the great blends all come from uh, Bordeaux. Mm -hmm. Do you have a specific style in mind or blend in mind that maybe have been, you know, made popular by those chateaux? Uh, you know, I, I definitely am more of a California kid, you know, okay. kind of born in California, raised all over California. And, uh, and I like, I'm not afraid to say I like big wines. I uh -huh. like them rich and I like them smooth and soft. And that's, you know, what this is kind of starting to evolve into. So during the ferment, we really try and get in uh, a lot of oxygen early on, try and soften up those tannins so that the wine has a lot of tannin backbone so that it can age, but we really want it to be big and fleshy. And uh, this is just, you know, again, being young, it's just starting to kind of come into its own fleshiness, but there's still plenty of fruit there. So like it fruit driven, it's big, soft, fleshy, and that's why we're drinking it. So you're, as a winemaker, you know, looking 10, 20 years ahead in terms of how this wine is going to evolve. What are mm -hmm. some of the specific characteristics that tell you that this wine is set up to age? Well, it's got to have, you know, enough of kind of the tannic backbone to be able to age. Um, you know, if the wines, the, if the pH is too high, it can be real nice and soft, but almost flabby or soapy. And this is definitely not that. This is right about at a 3.7, 3.75. So it's got enough of, you know, I think of an acid backbone to be able to age, but you can tell that the wine is still very concentrated and you can tell that it's young, but that it's got a lot of aging potential. And that's kind of, you know, as you sit here and keep drinking it, leave the bottle half full, come back the next day. If it's tasting even better, just showing you it's going to age really well. So, well, I can see the taste live folks are getting antsy over here, which means we have responses from the outer world. One thing is everybody wants to hear more about the actual winery of Jessup and then a little bit about talk about the price points and they just really want to convey a big thumbs up from all of them. They're loving the wine. Oh, hey, cheers to everybody. Um, the winery, the ta we have a split winery and tasting room, so it is a little bit unusual for the valley. We have a tasting room uh, just right on uh, Front Street here in uh, Yauntville. Uh, the ta the uh, production facility, though, is down in Napa. so. Um, it allows us to really be able to kind of do whatever we want to do down there. Um, uh, I'm able to make uh, some of my own wine down there. Um, so it, it, uh, it's not your traditional winery where you've got, uh, I used to be the winemaker at Rombauer for years before and we had this pretty winery with the caves up on the hill. Uh, for Jessup, you know, we really try and focus on bringing people in, giving them that experience and then you can have that great experience here in Yonville. Explain estate grown requirements. Uh, a state grown requirements, you have to have control over the vineyards. So it's, uh, it's an old rule that uh, has been around for a long time. We have control over the vineyards that we work with. Um, 
the laws are actually, it's kind of interesting that somebody brought that up because they are looking at, you know, reviewing those laws and trying to figure out, okay, what exactly is a state grown? Uh, you know, I mean, everybody remembers in the 80s, the, the favorite term was reserve. We had all these reserve wines that didn't really mean that much, but uh, a state grown means that you need to have control over those vineyards that you're working with. And what are some of the unique ways that you guys exercise that control and, and you know, get the grapes exactly the way that you want them? Uh, it really is kind of working with friends, uh, you know, with the vineyards that we source from, it's working with people that I've known for a long time that uh, are good growers. Uh, you know, we source some of our fruit from Tony Trouchard down in Carneros. Um, you know, we work with a number of different growers that kind of have the same belief that we do of, you know, great wines have to start in the vineyard. Uh, you, know, you can have the best winemaker, but we can only do so much. Uh, you know, with, with French cooking, I mean, the way, reason that they learned to cook, you know, with a lot of sauces was because they had bad meat. You know, we don't, I don't want to have bad meat. I want to have the best <laughs> meat. I want to have the best ingredients. And that's really what we, you know, what my job is, is to go out and source what I think is the, is the best fruit in the valley. And what is the uh, price point on this that we're drinking? Oh, boy, this is where, you know, the winemaker and the sales guy uh, differ. <laughs> I, I don't, I'm not quite sure. Uh, but, and I'm probably going to get harassed uh, back at the winery for that. I believe uh, that this is $86 a bottle Okay. Uh, when it is released. Um, right now we're on the uh, finishing up the 08 vintage and getting ready to release the 09. Okay. And what other grapes are you guys playing with it, Jessup? A uh, little bit of everything. Um, you know, playing with uh, Pinot down uh, in Carnero. We make Chardonnay, uh, make... Uh, Great Sauvignon Blanc mm -hmm. uh, from uh, George Shanks that he does the farming down there. Um, boy, we get Petit Verdot, Petit Syrah. It's you know it, I really look at it kind of like cooking. The more you know, the more ingredients you can have, the more things you can blend, you can make them better. And I'm definitely a big fan of you know blending. And what's your production look like right now? Uh, production, we're still pretty small. We're only at about 14,000 cases of production at Jessup. Okay. Um, but we're just sold out of the tasting room, so kind of something special. Okay, so, so you just sold out of the tasting room. Yeah. If any of these bloggers, Twitterers lose their minds over this wine and absolutely must have a bottle, yeah. what do you suggest? Uh, well, you can order it uh, online. You can order it uh, from the tasting room, but the best, just come drink with me. How do you refuse that? And you guys got a wine club? Uh, we do have a wine club. How's that work? Uh, very good. Uh, that's really kind of the, you know, the, I guess one of the big things for the winery. The, the wine club started uh, probably about five, six years ago, and we have a lot of members. Uh, we have a few different types of clubs where some you can choose, you know, your favorite wines, and those will go into a case, or you can kind of let us decide, and we'll be able to send you a few different wines. Nice. So. Twitters, bloggers, what do we got? Um, well, Table for Four is our ca Cabernet based blend, and it's kind of similar to the Jewel. Mm -hmm. They let me take what I think are really our best lots that year, mm -hmm. and I try and stress that it's Cabernet based, uh, whereas the Jewel is, is just Merlot based. Uh, the production of this Jewel was about 900 cases, so okay. not too big, not too small, uh, just right. Okay. And. Um, I'm digging this one. Yeah, me too. I'm, I'm getting a little, I might have to have you pour me a little more though. I can do that. It's okay. I'm That's a professional. What, are for. Uh, what are you drinking? Feel free with this? to do the same thing. There you go. What are you drinking this at home? Oh, uh, this actually I like with the uh, mushrooms. 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 I'm definitely a mushroom butter guy. Okay. I like with portobellos, uh, just kind of, you know, pan fry them up. Brings out uh, kind of that nice earthiness in this wine. Good answer. Good answer. Okay. Last call. What music? Oh, they're gonna. What music? Put you to it here. Uh, let's see. Here. I'd probably be going. Oh, I could definitely see Elvis Costello. I've definitely been more of a police guy since that's what I was listening to on the drive up here. First album. It was good. Actually, I think this would go well with it. And what will this wine be released? Uh, boy, the t-shirt's gonna get mad at me again. I think they will be <laughs> releasing this in April. So it's gonna be a little bit. The 08 is uh, available right now. It's just. Uh, I didn't make that one, so. Okay, so there we go, we got a treat. Too. Yeah. Time travel in another way. Perfect. There we go, ladies and gentlemen, with enthusiasm, Rob Lloyd, Cheers. winemaker extraordinaire, Jessup Sellers, I'm the mutineer, Alan Croft, with the incredible people from Cellar Pass and Taste Live at the Napa Valley Film Festival in Yountville at Bee Marketplace. More to come, cheers. <laughs>